Hi guys, today I'll be reviewing a program that I used almost every day, so I thought it would really be necessary to make a review and um, my opinions and what I think of the application. So today I'll be doing an application or program review of the application right here called VLC. So let's hop right into this review, guys. Right off this review, I'll give you a little bit of background information on the program VLC right here. So VLC is manufactured or made by the company Videolan. You may be familiar with uh, some of their other applications. One being the famous DV Blaster. So that's a little bit about that. Um, this is a cross-platform application, so it's available for Apple, uh, Macintosh machines, Windows machines, as well as um, it's also available for Linux, so that's a big plus. And also just a little something before I do start the real review. Um, this application is pretty good because I've had it for about six months and use it about every day. So I'm a heavy user in VLC and it's only crashed about two times, which is really remarkable for um, any media playback application. So that's really awesome. So now, guys, I will give you a full-fledged review on VLC. Hope you enjoy. So guys, now I will be taking you through a tour of the interface in VLC. So I'll just launch the application. Maybe you can see how fast it launches. It might not go so fast though since I'm running my screen recorder, but we'll see. So yeah, it opened pretty fast, almost one to two seconds like I said earlier. So yeah. So here is the basic VLC interface up here in the center stage of your play button. Then you have your rewind button and fast forward button to the side. And this play button also doubles as a pause button when you're playing your media. Then you have your previous button to go to a previous chapter in your DVD or video, or some in some cases it would be the main menu. Then you have your stop button. If you're taking a long break, it will stop this film or the video or whatever you may have in VLC. Then after that, you have your next button, which will go to the next chapter or advance to the end of the movie. Then next to that, you have your basic audio toggle. Um, VLC sound does tend to run a bit loud, so I use, usually keep it um, down here and not try to put it too high since it does run a bit loud. Then up here, you have your obnoxiously long um, VLC media player timeline, which I think they could have skimped down in the size a little bit due because it's like really huge and obnoxious. But, I mean... They do lack some features on the interface, but besides that, it's a pretty awesome application. So then moving right along with the interface, you have your equalizer button. This you can toggle around with the audio. You can see, um, um, make the decibels higher and such. Um, make the bass louder and amplify your sounds and all that sort of stuff. Just close this right here. And then next to that, you have your minimize button. I find this feature pretty much useless because I mean, you, it still shows the timeline, which is nice, but if you really want to minimize something, I don't know about Linux, but on Apple and, well, on a Macintosh machine and a Windows p machine, you can double-click the top to minimize something, or you also have your minimize button right there, so it's a kind of a nice feature if you're low on space or whatever, but I think um, all, all machines usually have a minimize button up there, so it's still a nice feature, though. Up here, you can add a playlist or folder. So, for example, if you have some special audio or video files, say on Christmas, um, and you want to show somebody, they're right there. So you don't have to go through the navigational nightmare and going to find the files in your computer and then find that they're corrupted or whatever. So they're right there. So you don't have to go in your computer and navigate through all those. I'm going to skip these next two buttons because I find them pretty much useless. So I'm not even going to get into it. Then lastly, over here for your interface, you have your search bar where if you have a lot of files in VLC, which I do, but I just cleared the um, files on here for the um, review purposes. But anyways, down here is your search bar, so if you have a lot of files, you can search something, for example, Christmas or what have you. It'll um, give you a nice, it's a pretty good search, so if you have a lot of files, it's quite useful. So now I'll be getting into the next part of this review. You guys just heard me say a lot of bad stuff about VLC and that I don't think it's a good program. I do think it's a good program, I just don't really like the interface and how it's set up, sort of, and all the buttons that I don't really think are needed and dysfunctional. But anyways, besides that, it's a really good program. It has a ton of features that no other um, media player really has right now. And one of these features is really awesome. 
I'll be showing you some more soon, but this first one is you can watch live streams on the internet right from VLC. You don't have to open a browser, nothing of that such. So to do this, go to File, then Open Network or Open Apple N if you're going to use a shortcut, and then you're going to enter in the URL that you're capturing the stream from. So Blog TV, Ustream, whatever you may have. And then you're going to hit open and it'll take a few seconds to buffer and then bam you have your live stream right on VLC which is awesome. And then here if you check this streaming saving box you can record the stream for later reference or if you're going to put it in a video or if you just want to remember something that you're not going to remember or anything like that. So that's an awesome feature that VLC has. You can watch live streams right on VLC without even leaving VLC. You don't even have to open a browser or anything like that. No QuickTime has, but it's still pretty cool. Um, if you go, you can capture live right from your webcam or any capture device connected to your computer. So to do this, you're going to go to File, then Open Capture Device. And then from here, you can choose which camera you want to capture the video from. But the only bad thing with this is it only captures the video, and the video is a bit laggy and poor quality, and it doesn't have and it doesn't um, record the sound of your capture device, which is kind of bad. But it depends if you're doing some editing or overlaying a music track or audio track over the video. I mean, that's still pretty good. But QuickTime, I have to admit, does a better job on that. You'll see lacks some buttons in its interface. However it is better than any other media player before due to all its amazing features and toggles and preferences within the program. I also think it will grab many heavy video and audio junkies because it has so many preferences and customizable toggles. Overall, on a scale from 1 to 10, I give VLC a 9.5. Thanks for watching, guys. If you found this video useful or helpful, please rate 5 stars. If you have any comments, opinions, or requests, please voice them in the forums below. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. Peace.